Hey everyone, welcome to this tutorial series slash crash course on ROS1 Noetic. If you have never used robot operating system before, or if you want a quick and practical refresher of the basics, this series is for you. The goal of this crash course is simply to get you started with ROS in a very short amount of time. You will learn how to install and set up everything, how to use the main ROS concepts with the command line interface and tools, and you will also write your own ROS programs with Python. In fact, throughout the series, we will do together a small but complete ROS application using a 2D simulation of a robot. I have designed the series so that you can really get a better understanding of the global picture and also get some practical knowledge that will be useful for your next step with ROS. Note here that this tutorial series targets ROS1 and not ROS2. And we are going to use the latest ROS1 distribution named Noetic. There are some prerequisites you have to have to use ROS. So basically you need to be familiar with Ubuntu and the Linux command line. And to write ROS code, you will also need to know a bit about uh, C++ and Python. But here we will stick to Python, so just Python should be fine. Now this crash course is super great to get you started. And if you want to go further and dive into more details, explanations, concepts, and C++ code, I also have a 6 hours course on ROS. So if you're interested, I've put a link in the video description below, and I will talk a bit more about that later on. Now let's get started with the series. In this first episode, we are going to install and set up ROS Noetic on Ubuntu 20.04, so that in the next episode, you can use ROS functionalities. So here I'm going to start from Ubuntu 20.04 that I have already installed on a virtual machine with VirtualBox. You can use either Ubuntu installed with a dual boot or in a virtual machine, it doesn't really matter and it's up to you. And if you want to follow the exact same step as me, but you don't know how to install Ubuntu on VirtualBox, I have another YouTube video just for that. I'm going to put the link also in the description because I don't want to spend too much time for that here. And now let's install ROS Noetic on Ubuntu 20.04. So you're going to open a terminal and so I'm going to put this terminal on the side and I'm also going to open Firefox here or any web browser and search for ROS Noetic. So you can go to the first link should be uh, wiki.ros.org slash noetic or something like that. And you're going to get to this ROS Noetic page in the installation part. You click here. And then you will need to select your platform. So we are using Ubuntu. And you have the installation for Ubuntu. I'm going to show you exactly which instructions you need and which one we're going to just ignore. And so let's get started. So first of all, you will need to set up your sources.list. So you can't just install ROS. You first have to update the sources. So we're going to copy and paste that line here first. So let's put our password. Okay, set up the keys. So here you have two commands. Let's copy the first one. So install curl. For me, it's already going to be installed. And then do that command to set up the keys. You should see. Okay. After that, now we can do sudo apt update. Okay, that's going to update and find the new sources. And as you can see here, you should have something like this. Packages.ros.org. Okay, slash ROS slash Ubuntu. So if you have something with ROS, then everything is working as for now. We can now install ROS and well, we have to choose. We have to choose between ROS Noetic Desktop Full, ROS Noetic Desktop, or ROS Noetic ROS Base. So what is the difference here? So this ROS Base here is the minimal installation. It just contains what you need to make uh, ROS run correctly. So the packaging, the build, communication libraries, okay, you don't have any graphical tools. This is just the bare bones of ROS. And then you have the desktop install, which is everything in ROS base and tools like, so graphical tools to debug your programs, a bit of simulation, a bit of uh, examples. So you have more things that are useful for developing. And then the desktop full, which is the desktop, and you have 2D, 3D simulators and stuff like that. For this crash course, 
we will not need desktop full. So if you want, you can install desktop full right away, but we're gonna install the desktop, which will be enough. So you just copy this line here, you press enter and boom. As you can see, ROS is quite big. So here you will need to download almost 300 megabytes and this is gonna install 1.6 gigabytes. You just put yes and then you can just make yourself a coffee and come back in a few minutes. Great, so once you are here, then as you can see here, I'm back to the terminal, ROS Noetic is correctly installed. And so here we have installed ROS Noetic desktop. And one quick tip here is that if you want to install any other ROS Noetic package, you will simply need to do sudo apt install ROS Noetic name of the package. And here with those, so ROS base, desktop and desktop full, those are kind of meta packages which are going to install a bunch of other packages. And if you want to install the desktop full later on, well, you just need to run this command and it's gonna install all the packages on top of desktop. So this is gonna stay the same and it's just gonna install the missing packages. All right, and now that ROS is installed, well, that's not all because you need to set up the environment. So as you can see, you must source this script in every bash terminal you use ROS in. So anytime you open a terminal, anytime you open a session, if you connect to SSH, okay, to your virtual machine or to any machine you have installed ROS on, you will need to source this line. So what this is, well, actually, let's look clear here. If we go to slash opt, okay, and slash ROS, now you will have a ROS folder here. You can see we have Noetic because we have just installed Noetic. I'm gonna go inside Noetic and you have a setup.bash script. So ROS is installed, but if you want to be able to use it in that terminal, you will need to source that script. So you can just source it from there, or you can source it using the absolute path. I'm gonna copy this. Okay, let's come back to the home directory. And now once you have sourced this, you can start ROS. And let's actually start a ROS master. So to start a ROS master, you need to run a ROS core. So the ROS core command, you press enter, and you should see this. This is a ROS master. So you can see the version here, Noetic, and then nodes, auto starting new master, okay, with a process ID and stuff. And once you have this, in order to kill the ROS master, you press control C and you are back to the terminal. So as we will see later on, you need a ROS master first, and then you can launch any node, any program, etc. But first of all, you will need a ROS master. And to use this ROS master, you need to set up the environment. Now, if I open a new terminal and I do ROS core, well, command ROS core not found. And as you can see, they say to you that uh, it can be installed with this uh, command here apt install Python 3. ROS launch. And please don't install this, okay? This is absolutely not what you should do. If you have this error, it's because you have not sourced this bash script. Okay, so I'm gonna source it again. You need to source it in every terminal, in every session. And then I'm gonna do ROS core. And you can see we have a ROS master. So Control C to kill the ROS master. So, well, make sure that if you have this error, you know that is because you have to source this script. And now in every terminal you create, you open, you will need to source that script. So that's gonna be a bit uh, boring, okay? To do that every time. So what we can do instead is we can add this directly to our bash rc file. And what is the bash rc file? It's simply a file that's gonna be executed with some script every time you open a session or a terminal. That's gonna be executed first. And so we can simply do this. So just copy this line, echo, and then the source script inside the bash rc. So just copy that and run that once. I press enter. If you want to verify, let's just use jedit with the bash rc. So that's gonna be in your home directory and then dot, because that's a hidden file, bash rc. Okay, so the bash rc contains a lot of lines, and if you go at the very end, you will have this line. Okay, so make sure you have this line at the end with ROS Noetic. 
Okay, now if I close all the terminals and I open a new one, I can do ROSCore and it's gonna work because the source line has been executed in the bash SC when I opened the terminal. All right, and now you have successfully installed and set up ROS on your Ubuntu operating system. Hey, and welcome back. This is episode number two of this tutorial series slash crash course on ROS Noetic. In the previous tutorial, you have installed and set up ROS, and now we're going to directly start a ROS node and understand what is a ROS node. So I have set up uh, my terminals like this. I have four different terminals here. And the first thing I'm going to do is to start a ROS master with ROS call. Okay. If it doesn't work at this point, make sure you have watched the previous tutorial and make sure that in your bash RC, so I'm just going to open the bash RC here, so the bash RC in your home directory, you have at the end the line which should be slash so source slash opt slash ross slash noetic slash setup dot bash and once you have added that you source the bash sc again or you open new terminals okay so we have a ross master here and we can start a node before we start a node i'm just gonna try to start another ross master in another terminal just to see what happens and we have an error here when we start a new ROS master. Why is that? Well, this is pretty explicit. ROS core cannot run as another master is already running. Okay, so if you want to start a ROS master, you can only have one. So I'm gonna have to kill this one so that I can launch a ROS master here. Okay, and now, all right, we have a ROS master running. I'm gonna do clear here. And so now to see what is a node, I'm first going to start a few nodes. Okay, we're going to experiment a bit. And then I'm going to give you a more detailed explanation of what is a node. And let's start one actually, but where can we find a ROS node to start? Because we haven't written anything. Well, the good news is when you install ROS, you already have nodes that you can start. You have example nodes, tutorial nodes, and many nodes for different functionalities. So to start a node, we will use the command ROS run, okay, ROS run to run a node, and then you will need to provide name of the package. So nodes are going to be organized in different packages. So you can have, for example, a node related to a camera driver, which would be in a camera package, and another node related to a temperature sensor in a temperature sensor package, for example. So ROS run, we're going to use raspi tutorials so this is the package as you can see i can use auto completion and then talk okay so just run like this i press enter all right and this seems to be a program that's gonna say hello world so that's gonna print hello world in the terminal with a timestamp if you want to stop the node you can press ctrl c okay, just like you would stop an executable that you start in the terminal so as you can see this node is well basically an executable which contains then a program that's gonna run and in this case we print something on the terminal every 0.1 second here now i'm gonna show you something very important is that first i told you that you need to start a ROS master and then you can start a node what happens if i kill the ROS master so i don't have any ROS master running and then i start the node so i try to start the node i will get an error you can see enable to register with master node master may not be running yet so the thing is as you can see you need to have a ros master so you can start the node if i start a ros master here the node is gonna work so it's gonna wait for the ros master and then it's gonna work so i'm gonna press ctrl c again to kill the node actually let's start it again and in this terminal, I'm going to do RQT underscore graph. This is a ROS tool. And let's just press enter to see what it is. This is a ROS tool. So you can put full screen or I'm going to put it full screen. This is a ROS tool that's going to allow you to have a graphical view 
of the actual ROS graph. Okay, so we are going to call the ROS graph all the nodes and topics and communications that are running on your computer. And so maybe, uh, maybe you will have a view like this, so you can choose nodes only in group one or zero. Okay, that should be something like that. And you can see that here we have a node. So the node is named talker with some numbers here, some random numbers. You can see we have one node, one node in our application. Okay, if I kill the node here, I come back to RQT graph, and I refresh, you have nothing. So nothing really impressive for now, because this is just one node. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start another node. So I'm going to start again the talker node, and I'm going to start here. So I'm going to do ROS run, ROS by tutorials again, and I'm going to do listener. So listener, and I press enter. And we have some text also. So this is another program that's going to print something on the terminal and as you can see heard hello world with the timestamp and actually this data is coming from the talker node as you can see if i kill the talker node here we don't print anything on the listener node i start the talker node again and we kind of receive things and we print this on the listener node. So we have one program here, one program here, and this program, this node, seems to be sending data to that node. Okay, so let's go to RQT graph again, and let's refresh, and let's put uh, nodes topics all here, with group zero, and you can see that, yes, we have a talker node, we have a listener node, and this talker node is sending some stuff to the listener node. And we're going to come back to that later. This is a topic, but we're going to come back to that later. All right, so you have your first communication between nodes, so between two programs in your ROS graph. So I'm going to kill that now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop everything. So let's do clear, clear, and let's skip the ROS master. Now I'm going to start another node. So let's forget about the talker and the listener for now. Let's do ROS run, turtle sim, okay, and turtle sim node. I press enter and oh, we have a window, so a graphical window with a turtle and we also have some logs here on the terminal. So as you can see here, uh, before we had a node that were just uh, printing stuff on the terminal and sending data between each other. Now this node here is gonna pop up a graphical interface. Now let's do RQT graph again. And well, as you can see here, we have, so everything square like that will be a topic, but we don't care about that for now. We have one node here, turtle sim. So this is the node we have started. I'm going to start another node here, ROS run turtle sim, and let's do, so you can press a tab twice actually to see all the nodes you can start from a given package. Let's start this one, turtle teleop key. Okay, and this one will allow us to control the turtle. So you need to, okay, let's put that here. You need to select this terminal here and type, uh, so use the arrow keys of your keyboard. And if I use the arrow keys, you can see here on this window, the turtle is moving. So make sure you click here again. And you can see I can turn and I can make the, the turtle move here on the window. And this window is actually controlled by the node running on this terminal. So again, it seems that we have a node here that is listening to the keyboard keys and that is sending data to this node here, which is controlling a turtle on a graphical window. So let's check that with RQT graph. You can click here on refresh. And yes, we have a turtle sim node that is that one. And we have a teleop turtle node, this one. And the teleop turtle node is sending commands here, command velocity, as you can see, to the turtle sim node. So this node is communicating with that node. So in the end, what is a node? 
Well, a node is basically any program that you can start. So an executable that's going to do stuff. That's going to use the terminal. So print something on the terminal, create a graphical interface. That can be also, why not create a web server in the node? Or use a camera with OpenCV. So any program you could create with code, basically. And then the specificity of a ROS node is that it's simply so this program that also has access to ROS functionalities and ROS communications. So the nodes are going to do their stuff and they are also going to communicate between each other. All right, congratulations. You've already seen a lot with nodes, common line and ROS tools with the RQT graph. And in the next tutorial, we are going to start focusing on writing your own node so that you can write your first ROS program. Welcome back. This is episode number three of this tutorial series slash crash course on ROS Noetic. So let's start to write some code and create our own node. But before that, we need to set up something. We need to set up a ROS workspace. So to write some code, we'll not just write uh, some programs like that randomly in our computer. We would need some kind of organization. And so a ROS workspace, or what we can call here a Catkin workspace, will allow us to correctly organize and package our application. And so if you work with a team, for example, or if you share your code online, this is the workspace that you're going to share OK, so you can easily work with other people. And I said the word Catkin, so a Catkin workspace. Why Catkin? Well, Catkin is simply the build system used uh, for ROS1. OK, you don't need really to know much about it. Just need to know it's named Catkin for now. And it's very easy to use it. And you will be able to go into much more details later on. But for now, just remember Catkin. And so. Let's create our Catkin workspace. We are in our home directory and the easiest thing you can do for now is just to create the workspace here. And how to create the workspace? Well, we simply create a new folder with mkdir and let's name it Catkin underscore ws. So why this? Well, this is simply a convention that is used uh, by many people. So let's use the conventions here. So catkin underscore ws for workspace. OK, then you can go inside your new folder and we are going to create a source. So src folder, make sure it's exactly src here inside the catkin workspace folder. OK, so you have src inside catkin workspace. And now what we can do is we can start to compile so we can init the workspace. And so we can do catkin underscore make. Make sure you do that inside the workspace, but not inside the source folder. Catkin make. And what do we have? OK, a lot of stuff, a lot of logs. But basically, this is going to compile everything in the workspace, install stuff, etc. So let's do actually clear here. And now let's do ls. You can see we have two new folders. Build and devil. If I do catkin make again, you can see now it's much shorter. Why is that? Because, well, we don't have anything new in the source directory. So once you have something new in the source directory, for example, a new package or a new C++ code you need to compile or stuff like that, well, you will need to do catkin make again. And that's going to add stuff in the build folder and in the devil folder. Now, I'm not going to go into details about everything that's uh, in those folders because that's not really important for now. Just one thing, if you go to the devil folder, here, as you can see, we have something that you should be familiar with, setup.bash script. As you can see, this is very similar to what we had in our global ROS installation. And well, guess what? We will need to source this bash script, this setup.bash, if we want to be able to use the code that we have written in our Catkin workspace. And so to source this, well, we will need to do so. Let's go back in our home directory, source, and then home directory slash Catkin workspace slash devil 
and then setup dot bash. Once you have sourced this, once you have run this command, you can use your custom ROS code. And so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna do JDIT bash SE. So make sure you type the exact same command with tilde slash dot bash SE. And let's go back here. So at the end, we have the source line for our global ROS installation. I'm gonna add this line. So if you want to copy from the terminal, you do control shift and C, then control V here after, so that's very important. It should be after the global ROS installation. So the setup bash from the global installation and then the setup dot bash from the workspace. You should have those two lines. Let's save this and quit the file. So you can see your global ROS installation as kind of a first workspace, so first level, and then your custom workspace here as a second level, so a second layer on top of the first layer. And so you need to source both the global ROS installation and your Catkin workspace so that you can use your code with ROS functionalities. All right, and now if I open a new terminal, here I can be sure that my ROS installation is sourced, my Catkin workspace is sourced, so I can use my own code. All right, and now you have your Catkin workspace completely set up and configured. Hey, welcome back. This is episode number four of this tutorial series slash crash course on ROS Noetic. So now you have a ROS workspace, or also named Catkin workspace, where you will be able to write your own code. So are we gonna create our node directly inside the workspace? So in the uh, source folder of our workspace? Well, guess what? No. Inside the workspace, we will add some packages. And inside those packages, we will write our nodes. Okay, so for example, if you write a driver code for some wheels, you're gonna create a driver package. If you write another node for navigation, you're gonna create a navigation package. And then you can have different nodes for each package, which are gonna be organized basically by uh, functionalities. And so one package is gonna be one subpart of your application. And so let's say for a robotic arm, you would have a package for motion planning for the arm, a package for the grasping, a package for the driver of the arm, another package for the driver of the gripper, or maybe for different grippers, another package to communicate with the outside, and then etc, etc. Here we're gonna create our first package and let's make this simple. So to create that, you go to the source folder of your Catkin workspace. As you can see here, we have a cmakelist.txt, so that's a link that was created uh, when we did catkin make before. So you will uh, always have this. And now, well, you can see we don't have anything else. And to create a package, you're gonna do catkin underscore create package, and you can use the auto completion here. So create pkg. You will need to give a name to your package. Let's call it my underscore robot underscore controller. So I'm gonna create a package that we're gonna use for the project of this crash course. And what we're gonna do is simply we're gonna control a robot. And the robot is gonna be the turtle that you saw on the 2D uh, simulation we launched before. And so because the package is gonna be something that controls a robot, I'm gonna name it controller. And then what I usually do, so this is a quite useful convention, is that I use my robot. So here, you will not use my robot if you create a custom robot, you will use the name of your robot, okay? So if your robot is named ABC, that's gonna be ABC controller. If you have a camera for the robot, you're gonna name it ABC camera, okay? ABC driver, ABC controller, ABC navigation, ABC motion planning, etc. Okay, so now you have a good system to name your packages. Okay, so catkin create package with the name of the package. That's not all. I'm gonna press space and now we're gonna add the dependencies. So a package is gonna communicate and need to use other packages. So basically nodes inside the package are gonna use nodes 
from other packages. And we need to provide the dependencies of those nodes and also the libraries we want to use. So here, I'm going to first put ROSPY. What is ROSPY? This is simply a Python library that will allow you inside your Python code to get access to ROS functionalities. And I'm going to come back to that when we write the node. So ROSPY. If you were to use C++ also, you could put ROS CPP. So that's very simple. ROSPY, ROS CPP. But I'm not going to put it because I'm just going to stick with Python for this package. And then I'm also going to put, so you can put all the dependency here, turtle sim, because we're going to need to use the turtle sim package to control the turtle robot. And so because I use this package, I make sure that I have the dependency here. Okay. So you can put your dependencies here and don't worry, you can add more dependencies later on. I'm just going to show you that in a minute. And then you can press enter. You can see here created file, created folder, etc. Successfully created files. So now if I do ls, let's do clear, actually ls, we have a new folder, my robot controller. Let's go inside my robot controller and we have different things. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back here to the source folder of our Catkin workspace. And I'm going to open a text editor. Actually, I'm going to open a complete IDE, which is Visual Studio Code. So if you don't have Visual Studio Code on Ubuntu, you can do sudo snap and then install. That should be code and dash dash classic. So with this, you can install. Uh, let's try that. OK, code is already installed because I've installed before. So inside our source folder here, you can do code and then dot to specify you want to start from this folder. Okay, and so you will get something like this. I've already put a bigger font here. And so get started. No. And we are in our source directory here of the Catkin workspace. So you have the cmakelist.txt here. And you have the package here, my robot controller. And you can see now we have a few things in that package. So you have a source folder that is empty for now. And then you have two files. You have a cmakelist.txt and a package.xml. So in the following of this tutorial series, we're going to add more files here. I'm also going to show you which extensions I use with Visual Studio Code so that it's easier to work with ROS. But I'm going to show you that uh, just a bit later. So for now, let's focus on this. So when you create a package, this file here, package.xml, is the file you're going to have for each package. Okay. And then you have a cmakelist.txt. And if you were using C++ before, well, you certainly already know about cmakelist.txt. So this file will help you to create executables and compile code for C++. And with ROS, it's also going to help you to create custom ROS messages. So messages are going to be uh, stuff that you send between nodes. And well, you can do, as you can see here, you have many comments. You can do a lot of stuff. You can install files, you can do testing, you can build C++ files, etc. For this crash course, we will not need to worry that much about the cmakelist.txt. Okay, so that's going to be it for now. You don't need really to worry about that. I'm just going to explain a bit what is the package.xml that you have inside this my robot controller package and so you have many comments all right and what i'm going to do first is i'm going to do some cleaning i'm going to remove this here i'm going to remove that okay and then i'm going to remove i'm going to remove this and all of that and also this and that. So now it's a bit cleaner and more readable. It doesn't seem as scary as before. So what you will have inside a package.xml is first some information about the package. So uh, the name, which is uh, first that name here, you can add a version number, description, and then you can add a maintainer email and name, also an author email and name. Okay, so you can add this, for example, 
you could add it. So let's just put that here, maybe. And a license. So all those informations here don't really matter if you're just uh, starting with ROS, if you are just testing some code for yourself. But if you start to work with other people, or if you publish this package on the internet, well, you will need to fill that, okay? And maybe put an open source license. So choose which kind of license you want to use, etc. Put some uh, name for the author and then maybe update the list of maintenance so that people can easily reach to the maintenance. So this is more like informational stuff. This here is, well, basically, so the build tool, Catkin, all right, and then dependencies for this package. And as you can see, we have RoastPy and TurtleSim. So because we have provided RoastPy and TurtleSim when uh, we created the package, okay, in the terminal, those are going to be added here automatically. And so if you want to add a new dependency, so if your package my robot controller depends on yet another package, later on you will be able to add dependency right here. And that's what we're also going to do. And well, now I'm going to save Control S. And our package is, well, initialized. What we can do, I'm going to close that. What we can do now is come back to our Catkin workspace and we are going to build Catkin make. So this is quite a good practice is you create a new package and before you do anything, you build that package. Okay, as you can see now, we have some logs here traversing one package, my robot controller. So if you have many packages, it's gonna go through all the packages respecting the order of the dependencies you have put, okay? And so here, processing package, etc., etc. Everything is done. Well, you don't have anything in the package, so it's just gonna find the package. Let's do clear here. And if you go to build, for example, ls, you can see we have stuff related to my robot controller now. Okay, so it's gonna kind of initialize the package and build it. And then if you ever add some C++ code, if you add some custom messages or stuff like that, you will need to do catkin make again before you can use the package. For Python, so when we write Python now, just in the following tutorial, we will not need to compile uh, the package again because, well, Python is interpreted, so we will be able to directly start the Python node without going through catkin make again. Great, so now you have a Catkin workspace, you have a ROS package with a dependency uh, with RosPy, so we will be able to write our first Python node just in the next tutorial. Welcome back, this is episode number 5 of this tutorial series slash crash course on ROS Noetic. Now let's write our first node. This will be kind of a hello world node so that you can get familiar with how to write your own node, how to start it, and how to use the command line tools to introspect the node. And in that terminal, I'm first gonna go in my Catkin workspace, in the source folder of the Catkin workspace, and now I have my robot controller package. So in this, I have a cmakelist.txt, package.xml, and a source folder. I'm going to create a new folder named scripts for Python files and actually Python scripts. So now I have scripts. I'm going to go inside scripts and let's create our first file for the first node. So here you just create a Python file. So let's use touch to create a file. My first node dot py. Okay, so just a normal Python file and let's make it executable, okay? So chmod plus x, my first node. And we have a Python executable file. Great, now let's actually write the code for this file. And to write the code, I'm gonna come back to Catkin workspace, actually the source folder of the Catkin workspace and do code dot so that I can open Visual Studio Code in my Catkin workspace. And we are already here in the package, and now we have this myfirstnode.py. 
So you can use any text editor, any IDE you want. Okay, I'm just gonna follow this tutorial with Visual Studio Code. So the first line we're gonna write is actually this. So the interpreter user bin env and Python 3. So this is very important. We are using ROS Noetic, so we use Python 3. But if you were to use, uh, for example, ROS Melodic on Ubuntu 18 for some legacy project that you would need to work on, then you would need to use Python 2 and not Python 3. Okay, that's very important. But now everything we're gonna do with ROS Noetic is going to be with Python 3. So we have this line and then I'm gonna do import rospy. Okay, so we have added rospy as a dependency when we created the package because we use the rospy library in our Python code so that we can use the ros functionalities. Now the thing is that we will not get auto completion like that. We will need to configure Visual Studio Code. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to extensions here and uh, well, it seems that I already have C and C++ extension, but we don't really need that. I'm going to search for three extensions here that are going to be very useful for us. So the first one is Python. So let's search for Python and I'm going to install the one from Microsoft. Okay, so just click on install. Just wait a bit. Okay, now this is installed. I'm going to also search for CMake. And let's choose actually that one, CMake language support from TWXS. Let's install that so we can have better, as you can see, better syntax highlighting for CMake lists. And finally, you can search for ROS. There is a ROS here, ROS extension for Visual Studio Code from Microsoft also. And you're going to install this extension as well. Okay, so now let's go back to our extensions. And you can see we have Python, ROS, CMake, and also C++, and two more that were installed when we installed the other extensions. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, well, I'm just gonna restart it just in case. And now we should have auto completion for Python. And as you can see here, the ROSPy has been currently found Okay, so that's gonna be easier for development. Also, if you go to cmakelist.txt now, you can see this is much better. Okay, the syntax is highlighted. So, great, let's just remove that. And let's write if name. So let's write this structure for the main. So if name is equal to main, and we're gonna write our code here. And the first thing we need to do to write a node to write a ROS node is to first initialize the node with rospy dot init and as you can see I have the auto completion so init node and inside we are gonna give the name of the node so we can choose a name here we have a name for the file we can choose a name for the node let's call it test node okay so on purpose I use a different name for the file and for the node just to show you that this is different okay so basically this is the executable this is the node and the node is going to be inside an executable so now we have initialized the test node great so if i just run the python script like that it's going to initialize the node and then quit and that's it so let's do something let's print something for example let's use the log functionality with rospy so you can use for example log info like that and let's say hello from test node okay that's gonna print some log in the terminal you can also use for example rospy.log1 okay to print a warning message so let's say this is a warning and we can use rospy dot log error so log error to say this is an error okay you can use also rospy dot log debug if you want so you have uh, different log levels but here we're just going to show log info log one and log error 
So this is basically a print, okay? This is a print, but also this is gonna save the log so that you can also retrieve it for later. And then, well, let's just use another function here, rospy.slip. So this is the same as time.slip, okay? You give a duration in seconds. So let's wait for one second. Just put 1.0, for example. And then let's put another print. So rospy.loginfo and off program. So here the Python program will exit and the node will be shut down. So I'm going to save the file with Control S. And then let's go back to the terminal. Let's find the file again my robot controller script the file is here what you can simply do the simplest thing to do is just to run it with python 3 my first node.py and let's see what happens and here you will get an error unable to register with master node why is that because if you remember you need first to start a ros master before you can start any node and this also applies to your custom nodes so you can do ros core here that's going to start a ros master and then start your node also this is very important make sure that so if i do jellit bash rc make sure that you have correctly sourced your global ros installation but also your current catkin workspace and so now, if I do Python my first node, this is working. Okay, as you can see, we have a log here hello from test node, and then this is a warning will be displayed in yellow here with one, and then this is an error will be displayed in red with error. And as you can see, I can start it again. So we have this, and then one second after, end of program, and then the program exits. So great, this is your first node. As it is executable, you can also just do this to run it. And that's the same. And what you can do, so let's go to the home directory, is use ROS run also. If you remember when we used some uh, nodes before, we used ROS run. And with ROS run, you need first to provide the name of the package and then the name of the executable. So what is the name of the package? The name of the package is my robot controller. So I'm gonna do my robot controller and just press tab and then if i press tab again well that's gonna put my first node.py because for now i just have one executable so i can start my node like this okay great so now we have a node that basically says something and then waits and then say something else and then exits so that's not very interesting so let's do something a bit more interesting so i'm gonna remove all of that actually let's just keep a log i usually do that after i start node or after i set up a node let's say test node has been started okay so we have some confirmation on the terminal now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a very common structure used by many many nodes in ros and this structure will allow us to just do something repeatedly every x uh, seconds, for example. So let's say we want to print something 10 times a second, so every 0.1 second, then you can easily do that with ROS. So I'm first going to do rate is equal to rate with uppercase, and I'm going to provide 10. So as you can see here, I need to provide 10 hertz. So I create a rate. Then I'm going to do while not rospy dot is shut down and while not rospy is shut down we're gonna do something so what is this rospy is shut down is gonna tell you if the node has received a shutdown request so the node lives inside the executable so if you try to kill the node for example with control c on the terminal or with some other signal that we're going to see later, then this is going to be true. And so what we're saying is that we're going to create an infinite loop to continue doing some instructions as long as the node is still alive, basically as long as we haven't killed the node. 
And what we do here, let's do prospy.loginfo with, um, let's say, hello. And then I'm going to do write.sleep. And then write.sleep is going to, so it's going to make the program sleep. It's going to pause the program with this information, so 10 hertz, which means that it's going to try to keep the loop running at 10 hertz. So basically every 0.1 second in that case. Okay, so that's a great mechanism to use in ROS, write.sleep, so that you can have a loop that is running at a given frequency, here 10 hertz. And if you want to change the frequency, you just modify the frequency here. And so to recap, this program will first uh, arrive here. It's gonna initialize the node name test node. So that's the first, the very first line you need to do. If you don't do this, you can't use ROS functionalities. After that, we just print something with log info, and then we create a write object here, and we have a very common structure, which is an infinite loop that's gonna run as long as the node hasn't been shut down. In this, we do any action we want. So here the action is just to print something. Let's keep things simple for now. And then we use write.slip so that we can control the speed of the loop. And when we kill the node, well, we're just gonna arrive here. This is gonna be true. And so we're gonna exit the while. And because we don't have anything else after the while, the program is gonna exit and then everything is gonna be shut down. So let's save this. And let's go back to the terminal. So actually, minimize this. And let's run the node again. So here you can see I don't need to compile anything, okay? This is a Python file, so we can just launch the file again. And now you can see, hello, if I press Control C, okay, we exit from the node. So what happened first, we have test node has been started, and then hello, 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 every, you can see, every 0 0.1 second. So that's working. And so keep in mind this structure here. That's something that you're gonna use a lot. For example, if you have a sensor and you write a node for a sensor, a hardware sensor, and you want to publish the data at, let's say, 50 hertz, then you just create a structure like this and you publish the data at 50 hertz inside the infinite while loop. Okay, and I'm just gonna show you something else. So you have seen that you can use ROS run to start the node. And now what you can do, let's uh, right here, you can do ROS node list. So ROS node is a new command line for you with list. And you can see the list of all nodes running in the graph. So you have, what is that? ROS out. Okay, ROS out is a node that's gonna be started here, you can see from the ROS master. So that's a node that's gonna basically handle logging functionalities. And so every time you do ROS node list, as long as you have a ROS master running, you will see ROS out. And then we have test node. And so as you can see here, so I do control C, the executable is named my first node, but in the graph, the node is not the same as the executable. The node is test node because that's what we have provided here in the code. Okay, and as you can see now, if I do ROS node list, I don't have test node because it's not running. If I do this, ROS node list, it is here. Now, if I want to kill the node, you can see I can use control C and I can also do ROS node kill and then just provide the name of the node with auto completion. I press enter and you can see shutdown request here and the node has been killed. Okay, and finally, let's start it again and let's do RQT graph to see that we have, well, we have a node, test node. This node is not doing anything special. It's not publishing to another node. It's not communicating. So we just have one node in the graph. If I remove the debug here, okay, the debug, you can see we have the ROS out node here, okay? But we're gonna keep debug so that we only focus on our application. All right, and Control C to kill the node again. 
actually just one more thing so let's say you have a node running here and you're trying to start the same node so ross run my robot controller my first node what's going to happen is that this node is going to start here but it's going to be killed in that terminal the reason is that a new node registered with the same name so if i start the node again here this node has been killed here so the problem is that in ROS, you can't have two nodes that have the same name that are running at the same time. Okay, so this is very important to keep in mind. And well, now that's pretty much it. You have now created your first node and used a few of the most important ROS functionalities such as logging, sleep, raids, etc. You can start your own node and you can introspect your ROS graph. Hey, I hope you're learning a lot. And I also hope that you like this crash course. If you find it useful, then you might want to check out my complete ROS course named ROS for Beginners, which contains more than six hours of structured video lessons. I will leave a link in the description if you are interested. All right, and let's continue with the video. Welcome back. This is episode number six of this tutorial series slash crash course on ROS Noetic. So in this tutorial, the goal will be to understand what are ROS topics. So for now, we've used some nodes and you have seen that actually some nodes are able to talk between each other. So they can communicate and they can exchange some information. So let's start again the nodes that we have started at the beginning. So I'm gonna start a ROS master now because you know that you have to start a ROS master before you can start any node. And I'm going to start, so ROS run, let's go back to ROSPy tutorials and let's start the talker node. So the talker node is a node that's going to uh, print something and it's also going to send this data to another node. And this node is, so ROS run, uh, ROSPy tutorials with listener. Okay, the listener is receiving data from the talker node. So how do we know that? If we go back to RQT graph here, well, you can see that this node is sending data to that node through the chatter topic. Actually, let's come back a second to the terminal and let's try to use some new command line tools to kind of know what is being sent to where, etc. So you can use a command named ROS topic list. So we used before ROS node list. Here you can use ROS topic list. Okay, so the command lines are very simple. ROS and then the name of the concept and then the name of the functionality you want to use. So here we want to list all ROS topics. And you can see we have stuff with ROS out, which are for debugging. And we have here a chatter topic. So if now we do ROS topic, info slash chatter you can use auto completion you will see we have the type okay so the type is basically the kind of data that is sent on the topic and then we have the list of publishers and list of subscribers okay so you can see that for a given topic so a topic is just gonna be a name in the ross graph you can have some nodes that are publishing so sending data to that topic and some nodes that are subscribing or just receiving data from that topic. And if it happens that one node is publishing and one node is subscribing to the topic, well, it's just like if the publisher node was sending data to the subscriber node, but through the topic. And the type is std messages here, string. So what is this? You can do ROS msg show and then the type so just copy the type here and you can see this message contains string data so this is the data type string and this is the name of the field so we have a data field with a string data type and that's what's being sent here okay this is a string hello world with a timestamp and this one receives hello world with the timestamps. So that's exactly what's being sent. And if you want to, so let's do clear here. If you want to check 
what is being sent on a topic, you can also do ROS topic echo and then the name of the topic here, chatter. And you can see we receive so data, that's the field, with the string. Okay. So let's say we don't have the listener running, we just have the talker running, then we can just debug and easily see what's being sent on the topic. Now if I kill the talker node, you can see we don't receive anything. We are still listening, but we don't receive anything. If I start talker, we can receive some data. Okay. And let's uh, go back here. Let's start the two nodes again. And let's come back to RQT graph. Okay, let's put full screen. And here, well, make sure you select nodes, topics, all, and put the group to zero. And you should see that. So you have this node, which is sending data to the chatter topic. Okay, that's going to be a square. And this node, which is subscribing, okay, from the chatter. And so by doing this, the data is going to flow from this node to that node. All right, so as you can see, topics are a way to communicate between nodes. And you can send what we're going to call a data stream. So some data is going to be published from the publisher here, going to arrive to the topic. And basically this, because it's subscribing, is going to receive any data that is published on the topic. And you could have different nodes sending data to Chatter. In this case, this node listener would receive all the different messages that are being sent. You can also have different subscribers. And if you have different subscribers, all subscribers are going to receive all messages published to the topic. Okay, now let's close that. Let's kill this and let's use another example. Okay, let's do clear here again. Let's come back to our turtle sim. Let's do ROS run turtle sim. Let's run turtle sim node. So we can have the robot here in the graphical interface. And then here I'm going to do ROS run um, turtle sim again. And there is a node called, so an executable called draw square. And this is going to send some data so that the turtle here can actually draw a square. Okay, as you can see, it's moving and drawing a square. So I'm going to leave it just a second to see the square finished. OK, and then it's going to start again. So it's going to, as you can see, send some different goals, etc. So if I do RQT graph and OK, make sure you have nodes topics and also group zero. If you have group one, you're going to see something like this, but I find it uh, easier to understand with group zero here. So we have a turtle sim node that is responsible for the turtle on the graphical interface. We have a draw square node that's gonna basically control this node. So it's gonna send some comments and it's gonna also listen to the current position of the robot. And so here we have, as you can see, three different topics. Turtle one color sensor, turtle one pose, and turtle one command velocity. So this topic here, well, the turtle sim is going to send data to the topic, but no one is subscribing. So nothing is going to happen with that. Now with the pose, you can see that turtle sim is going to send messages to the turtle one pose topic and the draw square is going to listen to this. This actually contains the current position and orientation of the turtle. So with this topic, this node can actually send its position to this node. And then this node is going to publish on the turtle one common velocity topic. And the turtle sim is a subscriber to this topic. So it's going to receive new comments from the draw square node. And as you can see here, we have a closed loop control. And so let's come back to the terminal. We can do ROS topic list and we are going to find here the three topics okay, that we have seen before. Can do ROS topic, let's say info with turtle one um, pose. 
and see that the type of the message is that one and we have a publisher and we have a subscriber those are the nodes okay publisher node subscriber node if i do ross msg show i'm gonna show what's inside this message and you can see we have here we have five fields which are float number so we have x y theta so this is the uh, coordinates and then we have the linear velocity and the angular velocity so the current velocity of the turtle and if we do ross topic echo with turtle one and pause we can see in kind of in real time what is being published on this topic you can see we have many messages at a very high frequency okay so if we come back here you can see this is actually the coordinates of the turtle so the x y and theta are moving so we're gonna come back to this turtle a bit later and we are gonna use actually those topics and so with those two examples you can see that topics are a way to communicate between different nodes in your ROS application nodes actually don't directly talk to each other they just publish or subscribe to a topic you can have multiple nodes publishing on the same topic and you can have multiple nodes subscribing to the same topic also this mechanism is anonymous which means that for example if a node is subscribing to a topic it's just going to receive the messages from that topic it doesn't know which node is publishing them and welcome back this is episode number seven of this tutorial series slash crash course on ROS Noetic so now that you have a basic understanding of ROS topics let's actually write a topic publisher in a python node okay so publisher first and then we're gonna focus on subscriber so we're gonna create a new node here i'm gonna go in my catkin workspace source my robot controller package and script folder we already have my first node and i am gonna create a new file and what are we gonna do here we're gonna control the turtle so we're gonna start the turtle sim node again and we're gonna make it draw a cycle and so as you would see drawing a cycle is actually maybe easier than drawing a square we will not even need to do a closed loop control just sending data on the command velocity topic and so let's name it draw cycle dot py so we have the file here and let's make it executable okay and now let's go to edit this i'm just gonna go in my source folder of the catkin workspace again code dot and i open visual studio code so we have our first node here but i'm gonna go in draw cycle and let's start with first the interpreter line so user bin and python 3 we're gonna import rospy again and then let's do if name is equal to main and the first thing we're gonna do before we even think of creating a publisher is to initialize the node rospy dot init node and we need to give a name let's name it draw cycle so here i'm gonna use the same name for the node and for the executable name i just used a different name for the first node just to show you that this is actually something different but you can use the same name if you want all right and let's also say rospy.loginfo node has been started now i am going to create a publisher so if i want to send some data some messages on the topic i need to create a publisher object so let's put pub is equal to rospy dot and then you have a publisher here class so publisher so that's very easy okay rospy dot publisher to create a publisher you need to give 
first the name of the topic you want to publish to. This is super important. You have to give the exact name. So how to get the exact name? Well, let's go back here. I'm going to start. So Ross master. I'm going to start here. Ross run the turtle sim node. So turtle sim, turtle sim node. Okay, we have the turtle and now I am going to do Ross topic list. And what we want is uh, that one. Okay, turtle one command velocity. That's the one that's going to allow us to send some velocity command to this uh, node here, which controls the turtle on the screen. So I'm just going to use that directly here. Slash turtle one slash command. So cmd underscore vel. This is super important to use the exact same name. And after the name, we need to, you see that data class. So this is actually the type of the message you need to send. Okay, because for a topic, you have a name and you have a data type. The data type for the topic is, so if I do ROS topic info, and then I use that one, I will see that I need to send a geometry message slash twist and what's inside so ross msg show with this what's inside as you can see this is a bit more complex but here we have kind of two messages inside the message we have first a vector 3 linear with x y z and vector 3 angular with x y and z so now we know what kind of message we need to send and how is it organized inside the message. So what kind of data we can fill okay, to send on the topic. So let's use actually the twist here. So geometry messages twist. So let's use that in our code. And to import that, well, we will need to actually import the message. And so we're going to do from geometry. As you can see, it's already installed, so I have the auto completion. So geometry msgs, okay, just as we have here, and then it's not gonna be slash, it's gonna be dot msg because we're gonna go in the msg folder of this package to get the message import twist. Okay. We import the twist message from the message folder of the geometry messages package. And now we have twist, we can put twist here. Okay, we use twist here. Now that is very important. We use geometry messages package. So this is actually a new package that we didn't know before, we didn't use before. And because we use it now in this package, in the my robot controller package, we need to add a dependency in the package.xml. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to copy build depend here. And then I'm going to put here geometry msgs. And I'm going to also do this. So let's keep things simple here. Okay, just geometry messages and this exec depend also geometry messages okay i'm gonna save package.xml and so now we have rospy turtle sim and geometry messages let's close this and let's go back to the code so we have our publisher object with the name the type and there is a third argument i'm gonna put is q size okay i'm just gonna put 10 so very basically Q size is going to be kind of a buffer so that if you send messages, so let's say you are in a wireless network between different computers and robots and the network is not that reliable and you're sending a lot of messages. And so with a certain buffer, it's going to help the subscribers to be able to get the messages. Okay, here the buffer is going to hold 10 messages. So here we don't have any problem and in most applications, especially if you learn or if you just run everything on the same computer or on the same robot, this is not going to matter for now. So you can just use Q size 10 
and you won't have any problem as for now. Great, so we have our publisher object and now what we want to do is let's say we want to publish a new common velocity two times per second. So at two hertz or every 0.5 second. In this case, I'm gonna simply use the structure we have used before for the first node, which is to create a rate and then do this infinite while loop structure. So let's do rate is equal rospy dot rate at let's say two hertz and then while not rospy dot is shut down. So as long as the node is alive, we are gonna do something. So let's put here send so actually publish command velocity and we are gonna do write dot slip so that this is gonna kind of regulate the loop so that it's gonna do this action at two hertz exactly or almost exactly and now how to publish something on the topic how to publish something on that topic well if we go back to the terminal as you can see we need to send a message so we first need to create a message and then send it to the topic just like if you want to send the letter to some address well you have the address which is the topic name you first need to create the letter okay you need to write the letter and then you need to send it to the address but first you need the letter so you need the message we're gonna create a message let's name it msg is equal to and how to create the message just twist so this is actually a class so you just create an object from the class twist okay of the message and now you can do msg dot and with the auto completion we have here you can see uh, the different fields so you have angular linear so i can do for example linear dot x and i can modify the x field in the linear of the message just like we could see here in the terminal so we have twist inside we have linear x y z and angular x y and z and now well if you want the turtle to make a cycle this is actually very easy you just need to give two commands to the turtle you just need to say to the turtle go straight and also turn to the left or turn to the right and if you keep the same command all the time it's just gonna make a circle okay so just trust me on that you're gonna see it's very easy so i give a linear x command why is that because so this is the turtle how are the coordinates working so you have the coordinates here starting at 0 0 x here and y here you also have the coordinates of the turtle and the x is basically going this way so always going in front of the turtle so if you give a x linear velocity you just tell the turtle to move so if it's positive let's put 2.0 if it's positive it's gonna move forward if it's negative it's gonna go backward and then i do msg dot angular dot z because well, this is quite simple here we are not in 3d we are just in 2d so the angular x and the angular y actually don't exist in this plane so here we just tell the turtle to go straight and we also tell the turtle to rotate so it's gonna do this it's gonna do a cycle so let's put just one for example okay and the message is complete we don't need to actually uh, fill all the fields uh, here we don't need to fill everything okay if you don't fill everything the other fields like this one the y is gonna be default value and the default value here i think would be zero okay so this is how you create a message you create the object and then you fill the different fields of the message with the different values that you want and i'm not gonna go very far on this uh, cycle uh, mathematics because that's really not the subject here here the goal is to learn how to use topics so let's keep things simple and now well we have our message that's just a message if you write a letter but you don't send the letter the letter is not gonna arrive 
So what we do is we do pub dot so publisher and in the publisher we have a publish method. And what do we publish? We publish the message. Okay, so that's very simple. Publisher dot publish what? The message. And then we do write dot slip so that we can keep this loop at two hertz. So to recap here, we first import uh, everything we need, so Raspi, and then the geometry message, twist message. In the main, we initialize the node, we print something, we create a publisher object with the name of the topic, the type, so the data type for the topic, and a queue size, and then we create a structure to run at two hertz, and in this structure, we create a message, we fill the uh, different fields of the message and we publish the message on this topic. So now we can say that this node is going to be a publisher on the common velocity topic. Let's save this and let's go back to the terminal. So I still have this Rossmaster running here, the total sim node here. And what I'm going to do is, so let's clear that, Ross run my robot controller draw cycle. So let's press enter and let's see what it does. And the turtle is making a cycle and it's continuously making a cycle. So the same cycle, okay? So if you want to make a bigger or smaller cycle, you can just modify the two values here. You can experiment by yourself. All right, great. Now, if I do Ross topic list, you can see that, uh, well, now we, have, we still have the uh, common velocity. We haven't created a new topic. And if I do ROS topic info with the common velocity topic, now you can see that we have a, so we have the subscriber, which is the turtle sim node, and we have a publisher, which is the draw cycle node that we have just created. Okay, if I do RQT graph, Great, so let's refresh, everything is good. We have the turtle sim node, and now we have another node, the draw cycle node that we just created here, which is now publishing on the turtle one common velocity topic. And well, because it's publishing and because that node is subscribing, then it's just like we are sending data to the turtle sim node and we are moving the turtle. And so I'm just going to finish here by saying once more that this is super, super important here to use the same name and the same message. Okay, if you don't use the same name, you're just going to publish on a different topic. And if you use a different message type, you're going to publish on the right topic, but you're going to publish the wrong data. So any subscriber will not be able to uh, read what you are sending. Okay, so you need to use the same name and the same message on both sides of the topic. And congratulations, you have written your first ROS publisher. Hey, and welcome back. This is episode number eight of this tutorial series slash crash course on ROS Noetic. So in the previous tutorial, you have written your first ROS publisher with Python. Now we're gonna go to the other side of the topic and you are going to write your first ROS subscriber and we are still going to use Python here. So to create a subscriber, we need a topic because we need to subscribe to a topic. So I'm gonna start the turtle sim node again and see what topics we can subscribe to. So let's use Roscoe here, Rosmaster. So in any terminal, actually, I always start it here, but you could start it in any terminal. Ross run um, turtle sim. And let's start the turtle sim node that you start to know already. Great, so this turtle sim node here, we have the turtle on the screen and I'm gonna do ROS topic list to see the different topics. Okay, so you can see we have three topics with the turtle sim node. As you already know, for example, common velocity is a topic that this node here is gonna subscribe to. Okay, so we wrote a publisher on that. And we are going to use now the turtle one pose topic. Okay, if I do ROS topic 
info total one pose you can see that we have a publisher which is the total sim okay so nobody is subscribing for now we're going to create a subscriber for that and we have also the type here so before you create a subscriber you can already see what's going to be published with brass topic echo and the name of the topic so total one pose and you can see we have so this is actually being published very fast okay just always the same data because the turtle is not moving let's go back to info and now let's write our subscriber so let's do that here let's go to our source and then my robot controller and then script and we're gonna add yet another node here so yet another executable touch let's call it pause subscriber all right it's here and let's make it executable pose subscriber is green great and i'm gonna go back to the source of the catkin workspace and just open visual studio code here okay and we have the new file which should be well that one right so i'm gonna start by just initializing the node okay interpreter is python 3 with ros noetic we import rospy and then if name is equal to main the first thing we do again before we create any subscriber is to do rospy dot init node and we give a node let's call it turtle pose subscribe okay. so as you can see here i have chosen a different name for the node and for the executable great and now what we need to do is to create a subscriber in this node so i'm going to create a subscriber i'm going to name it sub is equal to rospy dot subscriber you can see we have a subscriber class so we're going to create a subscriber object and basically the same way we have created a publisher here as you can see raspi.publisher and raspi.subscriber okay quite simple and then what do i need to give in the parentheses first the name of the topic and then i will need to give the type so this is the same thing okay when you create a publisher you give the name of the topic and the type for a subscriber you're gonna do the exact same thing so what is the name of the topic let's go back to the terminal the exact name of the topic is slash turtle one slash pose okay if you try for example to listen to pose or to anything else or if you forget the slash well you're just gonna receive nothing because this topic doesn't exist so we just use the exact same name after that we need to give a type so what is the type of this topic so what kind of messages are going to be sent the messages are turtle sim pose okay that you can get with ros topic info so we're gonna import the pose message from the turtle sim package okay and so here we are gonna do from turtle sim that's the name of the package dot msg Okay, we're gonna get a message import pose and because we use turtle sim we need to make sure it's in the package.xml but as you can see it is already here so the dependency is already in the package.xml we don't need to do anything else so we come back to our node and now we can provide pose here great and now let's continue so for the subscriber we have name type and we need to provide a third argument so here we're not gonna provide a q size but we're gonna do callback is equal to and we are going to need to create a callback function so why is that well simply because the subscriber then is gonna listen to the topic and when you receive a message from the topic 
a callback function is going to be called in your code so that you can process the message. And so we need to create a callback function. I'm going to create it right here before the main def. And let's simply name it pause callback. Okay. So usually what I do for the callback functions is I, well, whatever you're going to receive or do, and then the name callback so that you know this is a callback function so that you don't use it by mistake in your code. So I'm going to open close the parentheses and what do we receive? We will receive a message, which is actually a pause. Okay. And let's do this. And well, what we're going to simply do for now, and we're going to improve the code later. I'm just going to do rospy dot loginfo. And we are just going to print the message like that. So the complete structure. So that's the simpler callback you can do is just to print what you receive. Okay. And now we're going to do pause callback. Okay. Without any parentheses here. Okay. You just pass the name of the function to the callback uh, parameter here. Great. So now we have the subscriber. Let's actually add a, let's put that here and let's actually add a print here. So rospy dot login for, let's say node has been started. We have initialized the node. We have a subscriber and now we have a log. I'm going to save this. And well, let's just uh, try to run this code to see what's going to happen for now. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the terminal. We still have the total sim node running here. And here, let's do CD and clear and ROS run. So ROS run my robot controller. And now if I press tab twice, you can see I have three executables. So pause subscriber. So let's look very carefully. Node has been started and then, well, the node exits. So nothing happens. Why is that? Well, because that's exactly what you tell your program to do. Initialize the node, create a subscriber, print something and then exit. So here we will need some kind of mechanism to keep the node alive and to also be able to process all the callbacks that we receive from all subscribers. So here we just have one, but we could have many subscribers. So what you're going to do, and you will see this is very common. You're going to find that also in many, many nodes. You're going to do rospy dot spin. Okay, so what is rospy dot spin? Well, spin, as you can see, is going to block until the ROS node is shut down and yields activity to other threads means that um, this callback is actually going to work in another thread. It's going to be called in another thread. So this is kind of an infinite loop that's going to continue. Okay. Keep the program live. And if you receive any message on this subscriber, for example, this callback is going to be called in a different thread. And when you press Ctrl C, or if you kill the node, the raspy.spin is going to exit. And well, everything is going to be cleaned and you're going to exit the program. Okay, so if you have, you can see you have two different, two distinct structures here that are very common. This structure where you create a rate and then you uh, do an infinite while loop. So this one is more active. Okay, you're going to do something every X hertz. And this structure here is more passive. Okay, raspy.spin, where you block the program and you allow it to process any callback. What you could do also is to create different threads here before raspy.spin so you could do other actions okay in parallel because once you do raspy.spin usually that's the last line of your program okay and after the program is just gonna exit okay so i'm just gonna save now and let's go back to the terminal and let's run the node again okay oh it's working so i'm gonna press ctrl c now and as you can see if i go back to the beginning well we have a lot of logs so Node has been started and then because of the raspy.spin, the node is going to continue to work and is going to receive and process all the messages in the callback. And you can see here we have a first callback and then the second one, etc, etc. And this is going very fast because, well, simply the 
publisher here on the turtle sim node is publishing a lot of data now if i start again so we still receive some messages you can see the timestamp which is increasing and now if i kill the turtle sim node as you can see we don't receive anything but so here i'm pressing enter okay the node is still alive okay as you can see the node is still running it's just not receiving and not processing any callback if i start the turtle sim again you can see we continue to receive some messages and actually now we can introspect uh, this topic more to see the different nodes so let's start it again if i do rqt graph here we have so you have the turtle sim node here which is publishing to the turtle one post topic and we have the turtle post subscriber which is subscribing to this topic so then the turtle sim is sending some data to the post subscriber and if you want to create any other node that uh, will get this data you just create another node you just subscribe to turtle one post and you're gonna receive also all the messages and if we do here ross topic info turtle one pose you can see that now so before we had uh, one publisher and zero subscriber now we have one publisher which is the same and we also have a subscriber which is the turtle post subscriber node okay so you can actually introspect and see what's happening with ross topic info acuity graph etc and now i'm just gonna come back to the code because well this is well a lot of information and maybe we don't need everything so let's say we just want so when we process the callback we just want to print the x and y coordinates okay so we have you can see we have x field y and then theta etc we just want x and y so we're just gonna do that so i'm gonna remove that and i'm just gonna say okay we're gonna start with a uh, parenthesis like that and then let's say we're gonna print msg dot x and as you can see here we don't have auto completion because well in a callback this is actually more a python thing okay python doesn't know it's gonna be a pause so what you can do to help is to just put colon and then pause so this is not gonna do anything in the code okay that's not mandatory it's not gonna add anything it's just gonna make it more readable okay for you and other person to know that yes you're gonna receive a pose and it's also gonna help for auto completion and stuff like that so now if i do msg dot you can see i have angular velocity linear velocity theta x and y okay and i'm just gonna cast this as a string so that we don't have an error so we print this and then let's put a comma and then plus let's print msg dot y and plus let's close the parentheses okay, so we just format the text in a different way and we just get x and y and nothing else so in a callback here in a subscriber callback you can do actually everything you want so you get the message you can just print it you can save some data here in the node to process it in a different thread but for now we just print some data so i'm gonna save the file and let's go back here let's run this and you can see now this is a much better view okay we have x and y coordinates now i am gonna so let's do that here ross clear and let's do ross run turtle sim with turtle teleop key so we're gonna move the turtle okay here so make sure again you select this terminal and let's move the turtle and when you move the turtle you can see here the coordinates are moving directly okay the x coordinate so if i go back to close to zero you can see and then i'm at zero and if i go close to the top okay i'm at the top with 11 something for y okay so you can see the coordinates directly on that node and well congratulations you have written your first ross subscriber with python hi welcome back this is episode number nine of this tutorial series slash crash course on ross noetic 
As for now in this tutorial series, we have created one publisher in one node and one subscriber in another node. But we can do better than that. We can create one node which is going to contain both a subscriber and a publisher. And in this particular case, with the turtle sim, what we're going to do is to create a closed loop system for the turtle. So let's just start the turtle sim node again to see what I'm talking about. So let's run uh, turtle sim and turtle sim node. Okay, to see the simulated turtle. And if I do RQT graph, you can see that. Uh, so we still have the turtle sim node and we have this common velocity and this pose topic, okay? So what we are going to do is we are going to create yet another node here, which we're gonna call, let's say, turtle controller. And this turtle controller is gonna uh, subscribe to the pose, get the pose, and from that is gonna give a new command velocity. And so we will have a closed loop system. So closed loop control, okay? So let's start the node. I am going to go inside my Catkin workspace in the source folder and then go inside my robot controller script and let's create let's name this turtle controller dot py okay h mode plus x okay and what we want to do in this turtle controller is to so let's say that the turtle is gonna move straight and then when it's gonna reach the wall, so actually before it's reaching the wall, so we're gonna add kind of a security margin, it's gonna turn, so it's gonna slow down and it's gonna turn left, for example, until it is out of the security margin and then it's gonna continue, okay? And then it's gonna reach another margin and before it hits the wall, it's gonna turn again and continue and then it's gonna continuously run on the screen by itself and also trying to avoid hitting the wall. Okay, so that's our challenge for this tutorial. So let's go to our text editor and uh, I have the new hit turtle controller. So let's do the usual Python 3 and then import rospy and then let's do if name is equal to main and we're gonna first initialize the node cross by init node and let's call it turtle controller because well this is gonna control the turtle so let's give a meaningful name so what we need to do is we need to subscribe to the post topic and we need to publish the command velocity topic and i am going to start with the subscriber first okay so we can check that yes we'll receive some data and then we can publish from the subscriber actually so let's create a subscriber i'm going to go quite fast here to create the uh, subscriber and publisher because well in the previous tutorials of this series we have already created a subscriber here and a publisher on the exact same topics we are using right now so if you haven't watched those well please go back okay in this crash course and then come back here to finish the project so let's create a subscriber and let's say rospy dot subscriber. Okay, we're gonna use the topic name. So let's uh, use topic name. Let's do ros topic list. We are gonna use that one. We're gonna subscribe to the pose. Okay, we are going to use. So let's do ros topic info again cross topic info with the pose we're gonna use turtle sim pose so from turtle sim dot msg import pose okay we use pose and then we need to provide a callback so callback is equal to let's do def pose callback we will receive a message which is of type pose so this is just an indication okay for python nothing mandatory but that's gonna help us in the code and then well let's just do pass for now 
Okay, we're gonna keep it empty and we're gonna write the publisher just after that. So we provide the callback, pause, callback. Great, so we receive the message, so the pause here actually on this callback. So what we want to do now is from this pause callback, we want to publish on the command velocity topic so that we can control the turtle. So as soon as we receive an update from the turtle with the pause, we give a different command. I'm just gonna first do this raspi.spin so we don't forget. And then the node is spinning so the callback can actually be called. Okay, and let's add an raspi.login for with node has been started. Okay, great. And now, well, this node is exactly the same as the uh, post subscriber node we have written before. As you can see, this is the exact same thing. What I'm going to do now is to add a publisher. Okay. So I'm going to create a publisher. So let's do pub. And here, I'm going to create the publisher before I create the subscriber. Raspi.publisher. And we are going to publish on the um, common velocity topic, that one. So let's do this here. Okay, what do we need to send this time? ROS topic info with the topic name. We need to send geometry messages slash twist. So from geometry messages dot msg import twist okay we already have the dependencies here for uh, raspi total sim and geometry messages in the package.xml so no need to do anything and here on the publisher i'm gonna put the name on the topic and then twist the type and then i'm gonna put also q size is equal to 10 okay just like that and now i'm gonna do something very simple so just to make sure that this is going to work, so basically that we can publish from the subscriber callback, I'm just going to send a very quick command and try that on the turtle. Okay, let's do this step by step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a twist message in the callback. And I'm going to say message dot, uh, let's say, well, actually, before I do that, I have here message uh, pause which we receive and I'm gonna create another message. I'm not gonna name it message. I'm gonna name it comment Okay, cmd for example, and let's do cmd dot uh, linear dot x. So we're gonna send a linear x command Let's put five Okay, and comment dot angular z to tell it to turn, but actually we want to go straight, so I'm going to put zero. So the turtle is just going to rush straight. Okay, and now what we do is we use this publisher. We do pub dot publish with the message. So here, as you can see, we just create a new message twist. We fill the different fields, and then we use the publish method of the publisher to publish the message. The only difference with before is that now we do this actually in a subscriber callback. So we are not going to publish anything if we don't receive anything, okay? And what's gonna be the publishing frequency? Well, that's gonna be the exact same frequency as uh, you receive the pause message here, okay? Great, so let's save this and let's go back to the terminal and let's actually try it. We have the turtle sim already running and I'm gonna do a CD clear. And let's do ROS run, my robot controller and turtle controller. Let's look at the turtle. Okay, we have a problem. And well, if I come back to the code and well, this is okay. This is because here, well, in the pause callback, I receive a pause message. Actually, why not? I need pause, that's gonna be easier. And then, well, I receive an MSG and then I create a comment, but I publish, I don't publish the comment, I publish the message I have received. So that's not gonna work. And you can see this is kind of error you're gonna get 
Okay, if you try to send a message that is not compatible with the topic, you can see in publish expected uh, geometry messages, but got total simple. That's what we were sending here. I was publishing a pose, but the topic was expecting a twist which contains some uh, geometry messages uh, vector. Okay, so now it should work because I sent the correct type. Okay, and look at that. The turtle just, so I'm gonna kill this. The turtle just started straight into the wall. So this first iteration is actually working. Okay, as you can see here, we don't directly send messages. We don't directly publish messages on the common velocity topic. We only publish them when we receive some pose. Now let's make it a little bit more intelligent. So we have the structure, which is correct. And now let's say that. So when we reach this point here, so a little bit before the end, we're gonna turn, we're gonna slow down and we're gonna turn until we are out of, let's say the danger zone. And for the coordinates, so let's look at coordinates. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start Ross run my robot controller, I'm gonna start the pose subscriber, okay, which tells us the coordinates. And I'm gonna show you uh, what are the limits for the coordinates we want. And let's do Ross run turtle team turtle teleop key. So as you can see, when we are at the end here, so this is the x axis and this is the y axis. Here we can see that we are at let's say 11. So I can't go more than this. So we are at 11.08, so 09. Let's round it to 11, okay? Uh, the Y is in the middle, so 5.5 .5 something. Now if I, so I put here, if I go here to the top, well, let's go to the corner on the top right, you can see 11, 11. So the max, uh, here the max y is gonna be 11 and the max x is gonna be 11 and now if I go So I go this way You can see the zero is gonna be At the bottom left Okay, now the total is here. This is the bottom left. This is the zero of the Area, okay, so zero zero and then go up to 11 here on the x axis and go up to 11 on the y axis. And so let's say that we want a margin of 2, okay, which means that if we reach, for example, x which is greater than 9 here, which should be around here, then we're gonna say that we are in the danger zone and we want to turn so that the robot will not hit the wall. Okay, so here we do it with a turtle in a 2D simulation, but that's something you could also do with a real robot. Okay, let's go back to the code. So how do we do that? Well, we have the pose. So we receive the pose every time this is published by the turtle sim node. So I'm gonna do the here. I first, well, I first create a twist object and then I'm gonna do if msg, so actually if pose dot x, is greater than uh, 9.0. So if we are in the danger zone, so let's start first with uh, just this part here on the X part. Then what we do is we're gonna say comment.linear.x is equal to, let's use 1.0, so we're gonna slow down, and then comment.angular.z is equal to, and now we want to turn, and I'm gonna use 1.4. So those values are actually values that I have tried before, okay? So I've tried different values in this system to see what's gonna work and what's not gonna work. So you can use the same values as me for now. Uh, you can experiment by yourself, but this is really not important. This is a fake 2D simulation, so this is not that important. Here, this is gonna be in radians, okay? 1.4 radians. And so we do if pose greater than uh, 9, so if the x coordinate is greater than 9, we do this and then else 
we are going to do this. So I'm going to press tab and add the indentation. And so we have two different comments, okay? 1 and 1 1.4 if we are in the danger zone. And if we are not in the danger zone, we use 5 and 0 to go straight. And then we can publish the comment. Okay, so here we have a more intelligent control. Let's go back to the terminal and I'm going to start the turtle again, just so it's in the center. Okay, and let's start the node turtle controller. So let's actually kill this. We don't need the turtle teleop key. And let's start the turtle controller and let's see what it does here. Okay, it's going straight and it's going slow. It's turning and then it's going straight again and hitting the wall on the left. Okay. So it's actually working. You can see we go straight, we arrive in the danger zone, and then we slow down, we turn, and then when we go out of the danger zone, we continue to go straight. And so what we want to do now is to implement the danger zone for this left side and also the top here part and the bottom part. And so to do this, it's actually very simple. Now we have the code structure. So I can say if the pose is greater than nine, so the X is greater than nine, or uh, pose dot X is lower than two. Okay, we want a margin of two, or pose dot Y greater than nine, or pose dot Y lower than two. And that's pretty much it. So as long as we are in coordinates between two and nine, we're gonna do this. If one of the coordinates is lower than two or greater than nine, we're gonna turn with a lower speed. I'm gonna save the file. Let's go back here and well, let's start with a fresh turtle. Okay, and let's start this to see if it works. Okay, we're gonna turn and then go straight and then turn. Go straight, turn again, let's wait a bit. As you can see, we continue to do that. And it's gonna go right. So for now, we are only on the right and left side, but eventually it's gonna go down. Okay. Okay, as you can see here, we hit the limit here on the button. So we just turn a bit. And now if you continue to leave it like that, it's gonna, well, <laughs> it's gonna do quite a lot of trouble. Okay. And one thing, I'm gonna kill it there. One thing that may happen, uh, so I have chosen actually those values here so that it seems to work well, but one thing that may happen is that eventually maybe the turtle, when you reach some point, is gonna arrive at here, for example, and then turn, but not reach back the normal zone. So it's gonna stay in the danger zone and it's gonna turn indefinitely like this. So it's gonna be stuck and make an infinite cycle here. So this may happen. If this happens, you may want to tweak those values here and maybe lower the Z. Okay, so for example, 0 0.7, if you lower 0 0.7, let's look at what's gonna happen. It's continuing, but you can see it's turning really slower. So here it's working and well, let's look at here. What may happen is that you hit the wall at some point. Okay. For example, here. Uh, no, we don't hit the wall. But what well, may happen that the turtle hits the wall at some point, which is not really a problem. Okay. As long as you can make the turtle continue to move. Okay. I'm just going to go back to 1.4 here. Great. And now let's start it again. Okay, you can see now, continue to move. And if I do RQT graph, now you can see we have the closed loop control. Turtle C node is publishing to turtle one pose, and then the turtle controller is subscribing to this and is gonna publish on the common velocity. And the turtle sim is subscribing to the common velocity. So we have a closed loop control right here. Hey, welcome back. This is episode number 10 of this tutorial series slash crash course on ROS Noetic. So in this tutorial, I'm going to introduce ROS services. 
And first, let's start with the problem we have for now. So we have topics to communicate between nodes, but now let's say that we want a kind of client-server interaction. So you have two nodes and node A wants to reach node B with a request and then eventually get a response from node B. Okay, that could be to set some well particular setting and to see if it can work or simply to get a computation or to ask a question. And well, with topics, it doesn't really work that well because topics, as you could see, are great to send some kind of data stream. Okay, you continuously send data and you have some publishers on one side and some subscribers on the other side. But you don't have that client-server interaction, okay? So let's just start a node okay, that already contains a service to see a bit more about that, okay? So let's do raw score. And then we are going to go, ROS run, in the RawSpy tutorial again. And we are going to launch the add to int server. Great, so this node seems to do nothing for now. But actually, this one is just going to host the add to int server, so to add to int. So if I do now ROS service list, so as you can see here, it's very simple. You had ROS topic, now you have ROS service, okay? And then list to list all the current running services. You can see we have quite a few. So we have stuff with ROS out. Okay, for logging functionalities. And then you will see that for each node, okay, so this node is add to in server, you will have a get loggers and a set logger level. So this is actually already here because you have started a node, but this, this service is new and is from the add to in server. Okay, so what we can do now is ROS service info, just like you did with topics, but with ROS service, add to ints. Let's press enter. And now you can see that this service is advertised by the add to int server node. And you can see also the type. Okay, Raspi tutorials add to int with some arguments A and B. So what we can do now is, well, let's try to actually call the service. Okay, so as a client, let's make a client request. And here, well, the service is pretty explicit. It's going to add two ints. So you need to provide A and B. So you need to provide two numbers and you should get the sum of those two numbers. So let's do ROS service. You can do call, okay, to directly call the service from the terminal. Then we're going to put add two ints, okay, space. And what you can do now is press tab twice or once to get the auto completion for the request. So you have A and B, you can use the left and right keys to just modify the values. Let's put two here and let's put five here. I press enter. Okay, and we have sum is equal to seven. As you can see here, we also have returning two plus five is equal to seven. So what happened is that this client here reached to the server with two and seven. And then the server computed the value and returned the value. And the server is still running, so we can continue to call. Let's change the value here. Okay, 2 and 8 is equal to 10. Okay, so we can do different client calls to the same server and every time we're going to get a reply. So here, a quick analogy also to better understand services. So let's just think about a web page, okay, with a server. Okay, so when you go on the internet on a web page, well, you just have one server that is delivering the web page. You, as you in front of your computer, are the client. Okay, so your web browser is going to be the client that's going to reach the server to get the web page. And you can have many people connected to the same uh, server at the same time. So many people browsing the same web page at the same time as client, and the web page is coming from one server. Okay, so one server, many clients. And usually in ROS, you're going to use services for mainly two things. Either if you want to make a computation, so for example here, okay, we send some uh, data in the request and we receive a response. 
or if you want to change a setting. That's what we're going to see uh, just after that. And I'm just going to show you something. So you can see here when we do raw service info add to int, we have the node that is advertising the service and we have also the type. If I do ROS S RV, okay, so you have ROS message, so MSG for messages, and you have S RV, which are actually kind of the messages for services, okay, so ROS S RV show, and then the type, and you're gonna see here, this is very similar to what we had for messages, but you can see here three dashes. So basically a service definition here for a service server is going to contain two messages. It's going to contain one actually request and one response and separated here in the definition by three dashes. So you can retrieve what we have sent here. We have sent two integer A and B and we receive one integer which field is named sum. Okay. So for each service, you're going to have that. A request and a response. Great. Now let's change the example. Let's use again the turtle sim. So turtle sim node. And with the turtle sim, we actually have quite a bunch of services. So cross service list. Okay. So this is for the node. Then you have ross out. And then you can see we have clear, kill, reset, etc. So clear is gonna clear everything so when you move the turtle it's gonna draw some lines so with clear you can clear that you can kill the turtle reset the turtle spawn another turtle set the color of the pen etc etc you can teleport the turtle so you have many different services to do kind of one shot operations or computation so here we're gonna use the set pen okay so how to use that you do gross service info first to check what do we have here. Okay, so no total sim, kind of guessed that. And then uh, the type here and the argument. So this is just an help, okay, where you will need to send RGB for the color and then the width and then off maybe to turn on and to turn off the pen. So if I do ROS SRV show with this, I can see that I have, so integer, RGB width off and then three dashes and we have the response and actually the response is empty okay, You don't necessarily need to have something in the request or the response Okay, so now what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna start cross run uh, turtle sim Turtle teleop key That we can control Okay, the turtle you can see now The line is white. Okay, that's the default Let's actually change that. I'm gonna do ROS service call and then turtle one set pin. Then I press tab. And you can see here I'm gonna modify. So I'm gonna go with the left arrow and I'm gonna say red is equal to 200, for example. Green is equal to zero, B is equal to zero, and width. Uh, let's put, I don't know, let's put 4, let's press enter, okay, and you can see here, so we don't have any log here on the turtle sim node, the service was processed here, but it's not because the service is processed that you will have a log, okay, and here we call the service, and as you can see, the uh, response is actually empty, so we print the response, but because there is no response, we don't print anything, and what happened now, if you look at the turtle and now I'm going to move it again. Okay, now it is red. So we have just changed the color here using a service call from the terminal. So once again, what happens is that this is going to create a service client. It's going to call the turtle one set pen service. And the turtle one set pen service is advertised by the turtle sim node. So the server is in that node. So this request is going to go to the server node. It's going to be processed. So in this case, we change a setting, which is the color of the pen. And then this node is going to reply to the client with a response. In that case, we don't have any response. So we just know that the service was successfully called, but we don't have a response. 
Now, let's say that you try to call a service that doesn't exist. So maybe you have a typo or maybe simply here, I'm going to kill everything related to turtle sim. So let's say I try to call the turtle one set pane, but there is no turtle sim node. You can see enable to communicate with service. Okay. Because it's not advertised yet. Okay. We first need to, of course, have the service server so that I can contact the service. Okay, the same for a web page actually. If the server is down, well, you can't access the web page. Great, so with this, you should have a better idea of uh, what is a service. And just if you do, for example, RQT graph, the thing is that you will not see uh, services on RQT graph. Okay, RQT graph, you will see the nodes and the topics, and that's it. You will not see services. So don't expect to see services here. To see services, you do uh, ROS service list, and that's the only way to see all the services running in your graph. And now you have seen, well, that you can create nodes with ROS, and you can communicate between nodes using topics and also using services. So topics, you're gonna use them to send some data streams. So for example, a sensor that's gonna publish its data uh, when you need to publish a common velocity, okay, very fast, to a robot, okay, you can publish all kind of data with publishers on one side and subscribers on the other side. And you are gonna use services when you need a more client-server kind of communication. When the client is gonna send a specific request and maybe expect a specific response from the server. And welcome back to episode number 11 of this tutorial series slash crash course on Ross Noetic. So we're gonna start directly from the previous tutorial, okay, where we have seen what are Ross services. And actually we have started the turtle sim node and we have called the turtle one slash set pen service. Okay, this one is gonna allow us to change the color of the pen when we move the turtle. So here, for example, we have set the color to red directly from the terminal. So now what we want to do, of course, is to call this service not from the terminal, but from our code. So you're going to learn how to write a service client in Python. And instead of just creating a file to write a service client, we're going to use our existing turtle controller. OK, so let's go back to Catkin workspace source and let's open our text editor here, Visual Studio Code. In the turtle controller, what we have for now is we have one uh, publisher and one subscriber. So we are uh, receiving the pose, so the current position of the turtle. And from that position in the callback, we give a common velocity for a linear and for angular so that we can control the turtle. So the turtle is gonna move all around this uh, screen, this window. And so what we want to do, let's say that we want to split here the screen in two and say that when the turtle is on the right side, it is gonna use red pen. So it's gonna print in red. And when it's on the left side, it's gonna print in green. So what we want to see at the end is the trace of the turtle here. Everything here should be red. Everything here should be green. And to do that, we're gonna use this service so we're going to create a service client so every time we go on the other side so on the right side or on the left side we call the service to change the pen color great so let's get started so what are we going to do in the code well the thing is we will need to know the coordinates of the turtle and where do we know the coordinates of the turtle for now is in the pose callback okay so in the pose callback also we are going to create a service client and call the service so from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another function here to call the service client and we're going to call this function from there. And before we do that, I'm going to write one thing here after init node. I'm going to do rospy dot wait for service. So what is this? It's going to, so this uh, method here is gonna block here and wait for the service to be up. So if the service is not up, we're gonna continue to wait. So basically we're gonna wait for the turtle sim node 
And this is a very good practice actually, is if you're gonna use a service, you'd better make sure that the service exists because then if you don't have the service and you try to call the service, you're gonna get an error in your code and well, the application is not gonna work. So we're gonna first wait for the service and I'm gonna just put that after the init node in this case. And if we go back to the terminal, what is the service we want? So let's do a raw service list again. Okay, we want that one. Turtle one set pen. Okay. Great, so that's the first thing to do. So you can either wait for service at the beginning of your node, or every time you create a client and you try to call the service. Okay, so it's up to you. And it depends, of course, on the application. And now I'm going to create a function here, def, and let's call it very simply call set pen service. So this function is going to be responsible to call the set pen service. And I'm going to give some parameters here. What are going to be the parameters? I'm simply going to repeat uh, the list here. So we had, so let's, let's do this again. So Ross service info with set pen. We have this, turtle sim set pen, and then Ross SRV show set pen. So in the parameters of the function, I am simply going to repeat the different parameters we need for the request. So RGB with and off. Let's do this. RGB with off. Okay, so now we have all the parameters and we can give them to the service client. So let's create the service client. To create a service client, I'm first going to add a try catch structure. Okay, so actually try except in Python. Because if the service doesn't work, which means that, for example, the uh, service is not available or you send a request that is not correctly formatted. Or, well, you, if you have a problem at the communication level, you're going to get an exception and you want to catch this exception. So you can do except raspi.service exception, as simple as that. And let's just put as E and here we're just going to do raspi dot log one okay this is a warning depends on if it's a problem for your application or not you can put warning or error and then you can eventually fix something here and let's print e so if the service doesn't work the service call doesn't work we're gonna get an exception we catch the exception and we just print for now with log one okay and to create the service i'm gonna say set pen is equal to raspi dot service proxy okay that's how you create a service client with raspi dot service proxy and you need to give the name of the service so we already have the name here and also the type so the same as for a publisher or subscriber you have a type for the service if we go back here to the terminal you can see well actually the type is turtle sim set pen which contains a set pen request and a set pen response so we will need to import set pen from turtle sim let's go back to the code we do from turtle sim dot and here we're not going to use msg we are going to use srv because we want a service okay so msg for messages for topics and srv for services import set pen as you can see we have set pen set pen request and set pen responses which are inside the set pen service set pen okay and when we have this we actually have the service client here and we can directly call it so this is kind of a function. We can directly do set pen on what we have received here from the service proxy and then open close parentheses and we can directly pass the arguments for the request. And so the request here, you can see RGB width off. So those are the arguments you can send and that's exactly what we're gonna do. 
we're going to send the arguments here that we have passed in the function R G B with of with the correct order okay that's very important okay so you create here the service client then you call and what you're gonna get here with that is a response actually so the response is this and then what you can do is for example raspi so you can process this response okay if you are calling the add to int service you will get the sum and maybe you want to do something with the sum okay here well let's just do log info with response you can just also print the response if you want to and what's going to be the response well actually we don't have any response so i'm just gonna comment this okay just to show you that you can print the response if you want but i'm just gonna comment it for now because anyway it's not gonna do anything and well the function to call the service is finished so this may seem a little bit complicated but well actually once you've done it once this is gonna be the same every time okay you use a try except structure with rospy service exception and then you use a rospy.service proxy with the name of the service the type of the service you get the uh, function to call here and then you just call it and you pass all the parameters of the service request you get the response and then you can process the response and so what i'm going to do first i'm not going to directly use it in the post callback i'm just going to make a very quick test to make sure it is working okay so i'm just going to call the function here after wait for service because now we know the service is up so we can call it so call set pen service and let's try to put it um, well let's try to put it right so with 255 for example zero and then blue is going to be zero with okay we can't put zero otherwise it's not gonna print anything so let's put three and then off zero okay let's save this so we're gonna initialize the node wait for the service call the service and then do the uh, closed loop control with the publisher and subscriber. Okay, let's do this. Uh, we have the turtle sim here. Let's keep it. And let's do the ROS run. My robot controller, turtle controller. Okay. As you can see here, now it is red. So we have the closed loop system, but the pen is red. So what we can say is that the service is working. Now I'm going to remove this. So one very best practice with ROS is to test everything as soon as you do it. Okay, you have a callback, you make sure that the callback is working and then the publisher, you make sure you can publish and then you combine the two together and then you create a service, etc. And this way, well, ROS development should not be that hard. Now let's add some logic. So what we want to do is to say that uh, here, when we pass, uh, when we are in this zone, so x is going to be uh, greater than 5.5, okay, because the minimum is 0, the maximum is 11. So if x is greater than 5.5, we want the color to be uh, red, I think, and on this side, we want the color to be green. So in the post callback here, so we first create a comment and we publish the comment and after that I'm gonna do if pose.x is greater let's say greater or equal than 5.5 I'm gonna do call set pen service with 255 0 0 3 and 0 and then else call set pen service with this time 0, 255 for green, 0, and then width 3, and 0. So in this callback, we do two things. Okay, we publish on a topic and we call a service. Now, I'm not going to run the code like this, because if we leave it like this, the problem is that we're going to call the service very, very, very frequently. So with a publisher, that's not a problem. You can publish at very high frequency, let's say a few hundred hertz 
uh, even you have some controllers that publish at 1000 or 2000 Hz. But for a service, a service is not made for this. A service is not made to be called 100 times per second. Okay, service is made to be called from time to time when you need to call the service. And well, I'm going to show you something very quickly here. So we have the turtle sim node running. And let's do, well, actually, let's go here. If I do ROS topic list, so we have the pose topic. Okay, so basically the callback here is gonna uh, be called every time a message arrives on this topic. And there is a new command you can use is ROS topic HZ, okay, for health basically. It's gonna give you the frequency, so the publishing frequency on one specific topic. And so if you do that, it's gonna subscribe to the topic and it's gonna print the average rate. Okay, so let's leave it a few seconds and control C. You can see the average rate right now is 58 hertz, which means 58 messages per second. So this callback right here is gonna be called 58 times per second. Okay, which is not a problem, and you're going to publish at 58 hertz, which is not a problem. But calling a service at 58 hertz is going to be a problem, and it's probably going to slow down your application. Okay, this should be called when you need it, not 50 times per second. And so why I say that is because we can actually improve the code to say that we can change the color, so we can actually call the service just when we go from uh, left side to right side and from right side to left side not every time we move the turtle okay because if it's red here it's gonna be red here and red here and red here okay so it's gonna stay red so we don't need to modify every time okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm simply gonna compare the current x coordinate with the previous one so i'm gonna create here a global variable i'm gonna name it let's say previous x well, let's just say it's uh, zero, okay? And then, here, yeah, because it's a global variable and I'm gonna modify it, I'm gonna do global previous x. And I'm gonna say that I'm gonna use the call set pen service with a red color only if we go from lower than 5.5 .5 to greater than 5.5. .5. So if the pose is greater than 5.5 and the previous pose, so the previous x was strictly lower than 5.5. In this case, we can call the service. And of course, we are also going to update. So previous x is equal to pose.x. So every time we receive a pose, we compare it and we also save uh, the previous pose to be the current one so that the next time the current one is going to be the previous one. And maybe let's just put raspi.loginfo uh, set color to red. Okay. So we can even know from our R node when we change the color. And then else, well, that's not going to be an L, that's going to be an L if pose.x, and let's say strictly lower than 5.5. .5, and previous x greater or equal than 5.5. .5. So if the previous x was on the right side, and now we are on the left side, just at this point, we're gonna call this to change the color to green. And we're also gonna do previous x is equal to pose.x. And why not do rospy dot login for set color to green. Actually this, we don't even need to put it there. We can just uh, update this after the if, okay, like that. Okay, so what do we do here? We uh, check what we get. So the current pose, the current X coordinate, and we compare to the previous one. And every time at the end, we update the previous one to be the current one, so that we only change the color when actually we cross the middle line, okay? From right to left, or from left to right. Let's actually try this code right now, okay? 
You can see the post callback is a little bit bigger now. And we first have a publishing functionality and then a service client. Let's save the file. Let's go back to the terminal and let's just run. So I'm going to start with a clean turtle. Still have the ROS master running here. And then clear and let's do ROS run my robot controller, turtle controller. Let's see what we have. Okay, set color to red. And then set color to green. Set color to red. Okay, it's working. So let's leave it like this for a few seconds or a few minutes. I'm gonna go faster with the video to show you what we can get. Well, it seems that our turtle is having fun and we can see clearly here a separation. So on the right side, we have everything red. On the left side, everything green. Okay, great. You have successfully combined publishers, subscribers, and services in the same node. And just about here, 44 lines of code, and we have a lot of ROS functionalities already. Congratulations. Hey, it's Edward. I hope you enjoyed this crash course and that you found it useful. Now, if you want to continue to learn ROS with a full and in-depth course covering everything about the ROS concept, Python and C++ code, and more practice activities, well, I have the course just for you named ROS for Beginners. This course contains six hours of structured video content, and also you can download the code for each activity. You will dive into the ROS concepts with much more details and also discover ROS parameters, launch files, how to write service servers, and many other things. So if you like the way I teach, I recommend that you check the course out. The link is in the video description. Click on the link, read the course description, and decide if you want to continue. Also, the course will be updated if anything changes in the future, so don't worry about that. I also have another complete course to learn ROS2 named ROS2 for Beginners. This one contains more than 11 hours of video content with a big final project to practice even more. And again, the link is in the description. And now maybe just one question you might have is, is it still worth it learning ROS1 today because of ROS2 is kind of taking over? And well, that's a really good question. The first quick answer I would give is the best is to learn both ROS1 and ROS2. And the second answer is it depends on when you see this. Because when I publish this video on YouTube, well, it's not a secret, you can actually see the published date, it is early 2022. ROS Noetic will be supported until May 2025, at least that's the official date they have announced. And now the reality is that even if ROS2 is more and more used, ROS1 is still currently used in many companies for many robotics projects. And some projects are huge, and for some of those it's probable that ROS1 will be used even after it is not supported anymore. I mean, you still have airports running Windows 3.1 even today. So my guess is that ROS1 will fade away, but maybe not completely disappear. And we might see some community projects popping up around 2025 to continue maintaining a ROS1 stack. Well, this is just some theory, right? I, of course, can't predict the future, but this prediction is just to tell you that knowing ROS1 will probably still be relevant even after its end of life in 2025. So what to do? Well, you might learn ROS1 specifically to prepare yourself to work on legacy projects. Because if you get hired, for example, well, you're gonna arrive in the middle of existing projects, and if they are using ROS1, well, you will have to use ROS1. So that could be a competitive advantage for you. Then if you see this and we are still in 2022, 23 or close to that, well, at this point, it's possible that not everything you need has been ported to ROS2, and in this case, you will need ROS1 for a few functionalities. And also, as a general advice, 
learning ROS1 and then ROS2, or learning ROS2 and then ROS1, or at the same time, will allow you to better understand the ROS ecosystem, that's for sure. Alright, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in my ROS courses.